Hello, I'm Laura Moraski, and you're watching Build Series Live in New York City. Our next guest rose to fame on American Idol and went on to release the hit single, What Do You Want From Me? Since then, he's toured with the legendary band Queen, and now he's about to unveil his new EP, Velvet Side A. Adam Lambert is about to join me here on stage in a second. Get excited, guys. It's like a dance party in here. It, I mean, it should be, right? Should be. Yeah. Well, it should be a dance party because you just dropped your new single, Superpower, and this single rocks. Thank you. Oh, my Thank goodness. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. Let's kick it off with that. So tell me a little bit about this song, where it came from, why you wrote it. Well, um, I was. Th this song has been, like, you know, in my belly uh, for so long. I feel like it's a pregnancy that needed to finally... <laughs> Come out, you know, I, I I am so proud of it. I, I started writing all the stuff for Velvet about uh, three and a half years ago. Um, and I took my time with it because I wanted to make sure that what I was creating was authentic. I wanted to make sure that what I was creating was like my own lane, my own sound, um, not following trends, not following any anybody's business advice. I really had to like get down to like what I want to do. And I think... Superpower kind of embodies that whole message of saying, you know what, my superpower is being me. Yeah, yeah, and it, and we love you. That's thank you, know, you. <laughs> thank you. There's no there's <laughs> no shame in that. And who is, who are you today? Like, how would you like when you think about yourself? Who am I today? Yes, hmm. who are you today? <laughs> really, like, who is Adam Lambert today? I'm 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 happy. I'm I'm feel very grounded of late. I I just got off the road with Queen. We just did another North American tour. Yeah. Um, uh, and it was amazing, as usual, and especially with the success of the movie, I think we saw a much broader fan base at these shows, so that was really thrilling. Um, and now I'm putting out my music, so I'm a happy camper. <laughs> Well, with a song like Superpower, you're also, it's in, it's empowering in many ways. Yeah. And like, what are you thinking about when you're singing that song in today's society? Well, when we sat down to write it, I wrote this with a guy named Tommy English and Ilse Juber, um, both who are incredible, who I actually sought out. Um, Ilse's an old friend. Tommy is somebody that I became a fan of by listening to Bournes and Kay Flay, um, some great alternative artists. And that was one of my ideas when I started the process. I thought, I don't, I don't want to do the typical pop music. I want to go a little bit more alternative. I want to go into things that I can hear guitars in and bass and real drums and, 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 and do something that's like classic. Mm -hmm. And so I called them up on my own. Um, and I said, hey, you want to do a session? So we got together. And Ilse sat behind the drum kit, started playing drums. Um, she's very talented. And we came up with the groove. Tommy came up with a, a like a guitar riff that we thought was was sexy. I said I want to do something kind of like classic funk, but a little bit of Daft Punk in there. And so we came up with an idea, a groove, and a melody. And then we had to come up with what it was talking about. And we also we just had a nice conversation about the world. And um, it's still going on today. There are lots of people that are discriminated against. There are a lot of people that are ostracized, that are um, told that they're not good enough. You know, bullying is an ongoing problem that everybody has faced or known somebody that's faced. And I wanted to write a song to make people feel strong. Yes. I, I wanted to create something that that could be sort of a mantra where, uh, you know, you say, you know what, yeah, this is the case, this is the situation I'm in, and I'm not taking it lying down. This is not okay. And I have the right to be exactly who I am. I have the right to be strong. I have the right to be who I am. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Applaud for that. We need people like you to, to getting the voice out about this kind of thing, I think. so. I think that's one of the things that I've learned over the years, too, is that you know when you're an artist um, in you know the music industry, the music industry can be challenging, it can be confusing and overwhelming. And it takes sometimes a, a little time to figure out what you are and what you're not. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I'm so proud of, and this is probably mostly due to the fact that I have amazing fans that have given me so much feedback, is that... <laughs> is that, that, that we, we share that. We share the sense of being a little different, of being others, of being the weird kids, you know? <laughs> Never. <laughs> and, I wanted, and I think that's been the, the, the main connection that we've always had. Um, and, and so with this album, there's a lot of these themes. There's a lot of themes of empowerment, of, of, of taking, uh, having pride in who you are, um, and, and, 
and finding a way to say um, F you, haters, yeah. Yeah. but with a smile on your face while you're shaking your butt, you know? <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah, it definitely makes you want to move, this single. Good. Anyway. Yeah, Thank I you. Mean, that's the thing. I, yeah. How would you describe the rest of the record and how it fits into this first single that we heard? Well, the, the first half, side A, is um, there's definitely a lot of groove mm -hmm. in side A. I mean, w superpower is that. You know, it's drums, bass, guitar, um, something that you can catch a pocket to. Um, and there's just kind of different versions of a good pocket on side A. <laughs> Yeah, there's just different versions and and um, different uh, different colors and um, some stuff that's like super happy, some stuff that's a bit darker, um, and then there's also uh, a very heartfelt ballad as well. Nice. Yes. What was what was the vision behind the heartfelt ballad? Um, I don't want to give too much away because it's you know it's still a couple weeks away, but it's um. It's the, it was actually written before I was in the relationship that I'm in now, um, in that feeling of of meeting somebody and having a connection with them that you know is something, there's something here. This could be something great. If only I had the time and the place to be in this and explore this with you. But I'm someone that's always moving around and I'm, I'm traveling and I'm working all the time. And it was that, that song about, hey, wow, this is like, this, this is kind of a misconnection. I'm gonna have to leave and um, gosh, if only I could do something to be with you. Right. So and so relatable. it's so it's it's a song about kind of like very very um grand ideas of like the the the, the lengths I would go to make a real love work. Amazing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey. How are you? <laughs> familiar faces in the yes, crowd. Yes, a lot of familiar yes. faces in the yes. crowd. <laughs> I love the passion of your fans. I mean, Me that too. must just drive you. Me too. All the time. Um, Honestly, if it weren't for you, and this, this sounds super cliche, but like at this point, if it weren't for you guys and all the support that I've gotten and all the feedback I've gotten, I don't know if I'd still be doing this. I don't know. Yeah. You know, because it, you can't just sum it up from your own self. I'm not, you know, I'm not that big of a narcissist. So <laughs> the fact, <laughs> maybe a little bit, but not that big. And it, and it really, when I read stuff online and I meet you guys out and about, it's, this, it's the things that I hear back, it's the encouragement that I get, it's the connection that you guys talk about that makes me feel like I'm on the right path and that it's something that I should keep doing. Sure, I mean. Yeah. What, Seriously. What would you say success means to you today versus maybe 10 years ago when you got your start at Post American Idol? I think that my definition of success has changed because I think it, it's really easy to get wrapped up in in like the business, you know, and the hustle and um, chart position and how many streams you have and how many units have been sold. And that's all very important and very exciting still. But my definition of what success is, is it, do I feel like I'm being myself? Do I feel like this is making me happy and proud? Do, do I feel like I'm connecting? Yeah. And so when I've shifted my focus to those things that, that truly matter, I think, in the big picture and in the long run, I found myself being happier and feeling more successful. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we are, um, <laughs> there's so much to talk to you about, but I want to go back to the EP. But I also want to yeah. talk to you about this Queen um, it's a tour that just ended. Yeah. But you're going to be playing at the Citizens Fest here in New York. Today. Yeah. So I, how would you sum up the, the last few months of your Queen experience? You know, we've been working together for eight years, and it's crazy. Um, I, I, I'm so lucky. I, I, and I think this is actually the speech that I make almost every night. <laughs> <laughs> and, the th and the thing is, is that it's, it's, a, it, it's not a scripted thing. It's just something that I feel like I need to tell everybody that I get in front of, because it is 100% true. I'm, it's the most beautifully symbiotic relationship. You know, they have done so much for me. They've trusted me with this music. They trust me with these performances. We work together. Um, obviously, it's the same main songs that we've been doing, but each tour that we do is like a new production and maybe a new set list or we'll do something different with the song. And that's been a full team effort. And it, it honestly, if they wanted to take the reins and do it all themselves, I would be happy to be in the back seat. But the fact that they've included me and that we work together and we collaborate and we throw ideas back and forth, that's done a lot for me as um, a professional. I've learned so much. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure you're still learning. As uh, of course. I'm always of still course. learning. Yeah. 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 I mean, has Queen heard the EP? Yes. 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 And do you get their feedback? Or I like, did. Hey, yeah. Is, okay. I was on a, a flight uh, probably, what was that? 
two months ago, and I, I sat across from Brian, and I put my Wi-Fi or my Bluetooth headphones on him, and turned it up really loud, and and played everything, and I was like thoughts, thoughts, you know, ideas, and he had a couple little, oh, you, you might want to take this part and go here, and it, and, and getting advice from someone like Brian May. And then Roger, I also played stuff for Roger. Um, it, getting getting little tidbits of advice from them is really cool. Yeah, I yeah, mean, can't can't hurt. Right? No, and especially with this project because more than anything I've done, this is probably the most sort of classic. Um, a lot of the ideas musically on this album are a bit retro. They're kind of you know they're borrowing from the '70s and the early '80s, which was their their heyday. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that getting advice from them on this project in particular is really important. Wow. Well, you know, today, I think it's today, would have been Freddie Mercury's 73rd birthday. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. If yeah. he were here, what would you say to him? What would you ask him? Well, if he were here, I probably wouldn't have a job with them. Yeah. <laughs> but no. For but if day. he just popped up yeah. today, like, yeah. a, like an apparition, Imagine. I would say, hey, thanks for the gig. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I would also I would also ask him about stuff. I yeah. specifically I think I'd want to know you know why did you write certain songs? What was the inspiration? Yeah. I'd want to know more about his personal experience because I think that's what's interesting about Freddie is that there's some mystique there. Mm -hmm. You know he didn't do that many interviews. Um, he was around in a time where. It, it, for example, his sexuality was something that was somewhat taboo. He didn't really talk about it in the mainstream media or with, you know, fans. So I'd want to know more about that. Yeah, yeah. And and I don't know. I, I, I'd like to believe that if he were still with us, he would have been somebody that would have been in like the first wave of people that um, were loud and proud uh, when that became somewhat okay. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, someone like Elton, for example, who who came out and was really, really bold about it and really unapologetic about it and then started the AIDS fund that, that he's continued to, to run. I would hope that Freddie would have been someone like that. Yeah. I think he would have. Well, in, in your own way, um, you've hit milestones in that way, too. I think you're one of the first or the first out artists who had a number one had had a number one album on the Billboard charts, which is crazy. It's crazy to think yeah. about because um, it's it was recent. Yeah. Um, do you feel like there's an onus on you in some way to sort of like continue that that path or that, you know, charting that path? I think that, you know, I, I think that it's it's part of a legacy that I'm growing that I'm really proud of. Um, I think looking at the last decade in the music industry, especially in the U.S., you've seen such a rapid growth of, of artists that are queer mm -hmm. come out and they're now part of the mainstream. There's mainstream music success for them. Um, same thing with actors, actresses. Um, I, I'm glad that I was a part of that. I'm glad that I was sort of part of that wave um, you know, because we've definitely had artists in other decades that have done big things. Look at like Boy George, for example, yeah. who was for his time, very ahead of his time saying, yeah, I'm queer. What? I mean, that was the early 80s. He was saying that on yeah. TV. Yeah, exactly. I mean, people forget that about George. You know, he was a trailblazer that way. Yeah. Um, but, you know, then the 80s happened and the 90s happened. And, and so for the 2000s, at the end of the 2000s, when I came out with American Idol, um, I remember the first time I saw that magazine cover that said, you know, we love this guy, you know, and he may or may not be gay. And I was like, <laughs> so weird, because I never really thought about it that way. I, I came out when I was a, a teenager, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I wasn't hiding my sexuality from anybody, uh, like, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, and so it was very interesting that, that now all of a sudden I was on, you know, a world stage. I was being watched on television by millions and millions of people. And this became this question, is he or isn't he? And I thought, well, yeah, duh. <laughs> it wasn't something that I had really thought about, like having to kind of explain or qualify in any sort of way for over 10 years. So all of a sudden when that became sort of a big question and I got done with the show and I started doing interviews again, yeah. That was something that I ended up talking about a lot. Yeah. And it, at first, I, I, I definitely wasn't uncomfortable talking about it. Um, I'm, I love being gay. It's great. Um, it's, whatever. Um, and then I started realizing the effects that it had, the, the, the positive effects that it had by um, setting an example of saying, hey, I'm not apologizing for this. This is who I am. And when I started hearing back from, from fans, particularly younger fans who were struggling with their sexuality and their identity, when they would say things to me like, you know, hearing you on this made me feel this way and it made me feel like I could talk to my parents about this. It made me feel like I didn't have to be scared to express myself. 
that's when it became bigger than me. And that's when I realized that being, you know, a pop artist had um, such value. And it was, it was more than just the music. And that was the very thing that made me realize that the music that I created should circle back to that. Sure. Because that's, that's powerful. Yeah, we've made some strides. More to come, though. Yeah. In that in that way. Yeah, big time. Um, you know, I saw you in the video for Taylor Swift's "You Need to Calm Down," yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. Like one of the many cameos, but yeah. that must have been a trip to be in that. It was crazy. It was such a last minute thing. I was on Ellen uh, filming a performance of New Eyes. And she was on Ellen. Um, we were our episode wasn't at the same time. We were like, you know, they do pre-taping and stuff like that. And she came to my dressing room, and I've met her a couple times briefly. And it was like, hey, how have you been? And small talk, small talk. You want to be in my video? We're filming something in like 20 minutes on the back lot here. And I was like, <laughs> okay, sure, yeah, sign me up. So and yeah, there it goes. And now it's it like, which is one of VMA, and like yeah. this is really history. Yeah, and I'm really it, it, Todrick, who I'm friends with as well. It was really exciting that Todrick was like a, a, a producer of that with her, and um, I think they collaborated on on getting a lot of amazing people in that video. Yeah, so I, yeah. I'm I'm happy to be a part of that company. So so fun. Yeah. I mean, what a year you've had kicking it off with the Oscars. I mean, that was must that have was been crazy. incredible. What was <laughs> what must have been going through your mind when you perform open the Oscars with Queen? I kind of had to like talk myself down and just be like, it, it, no big deal, it's no big deal. It's just the Oscars, whatever. And I, I, I was like, I've sung this song with them how many times? These are my guys, like it's not a big deal. Just look at the lights, play to the lights, you know? And then, and then uh, towards the end of the song when like all the hard parts were over, um, like the final chorus, I kind of looked in the audience and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> It's crazy. I'm, you know, and I'm like, I'm a huge lover of film and television, and I watch a lot. Um, so seeing a lot of, of actors and actresses that I look up to so much was it was a big treat. You had a cameo in the the Queen film. Yes, so blink we'll, and you would miss it. Blink and you would miss a it. A lot of people didn't even know, <laughs> um, which was a lot of fun. We 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 had a, like a talk about it after I filmed. Like, don't even put me in the credits. Let's just see if they figure it out. You were in disguise a little bit. You had like big time. Hair. They had they gave me like a big like weird mustache like. Yeah. Weirder than ever, than I've ever had on my own. And a hat and a wig and a, yeah, it was fun. And would you do acting again? Would, like, would you get the acting bug say? Oh, it's the bugs in there. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I started out doing theater. Mm -hmm. So I've always been an actor. Um, and uh, musicals were sort of, that was my career before I went on American Idol. So that's always been something that's like a part of my performance style. And, and I'd like to explore more. When you, I mean, you, auditioned for American Idol and you were just like one year shy of pretty much like the the cap, right? I mean, what was going through your <laughs> mind then to be like, okay, because you could have gone on and continued doing your theater and probably made a name for yourself on your own. Yeah. And what made you decide, hey, I should just do this? Honestly, I was in a production of Wicked in Los Angeles and um, I had been doing the LA production for about two years and before that I had done the national tour. Um, so I, you know, I was working with amazing talent and I was the understudy for Fierro. And the guy that I was understudying, his contract ended, and I was like, Wait, can, I, can, you, can I get a promotion? And they didn't promote me. And it's probably because I was late all the time. Um, <laughs> um, and then they got another guy, and they didn't promote me again. And I was like, this is stupid. You know what? Maybe if I got on TV, you would like, take me seriously. And literally, I was like saying that backstage with all my castmates, and they're like, well, you should, you should audition for American Idol. And I was like, no, they would never want someone like me. And then that year rolled around, and my friends kind of put me up to it. They're like, if you don't audition, we're, gonna, we're not going to talk to you anymore. And I was like, well, that would really suck. Um, no promotion, no friends. So, so I, I just kind of, I auditioned literally like on a whim. Like, I might as well do it. It's my last year of eligibility. What if I... What you know, I don't want to do the what if and have regrets. So I just went with two good friends of mine. I went up there and like in San Francisco and spent the night at that arena up there, slept on the floor all morning. I mean, it was like the real deal. Yeah. And um, I made the first round, and then I made the next round, and then I made the next round for producers. And then they were like, okay, in order to like audition for the TV judges, you got to quit your job because it's a professional entertainment job. And that's the way the show worked. You couldn't have any sort of contracts with any sort of professional entertainment, anything. So I had to quit my job in order to get in front of Randy, Paula, Simon, and Kara. So when I walked into the room, I was like, if they don't... <laughs> 
And when Randy was like, I ain't scared in my head, I was like, when he said, don't be scared, and I said, I ain't scared in my, my monologue was like, I'm not scared. I'm going to be pissed if you don't put me in. <laughs> I just quit my job. Yeah, I need the job. Give me a gig. <laughs> so, and, then, and the rest is history, and it was amazing. And, and honestly, I was like, I just want to make it. We did Hollywood Week. I said, I just want to make it to the top 12. Then I'll be good. Then they'll kick me off or whatever, and I'll have some TV time. I'll be good. And then I made it to the 11, and then 10, and then nine, and I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, my gosh. The rest is history, that's for sure. Well, we're glad you did that. Um, okay, I have some audience questions and tweets, but we are seeing side A, September 27th. Yes. Obviously, there'll be a side B. Yes. Any timeline for that? Uh, early next year. Okay. Yeah. All right. So lots of good music from Adam. Potentially Hunter. spring. Something in there. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, um, my time is up for now, but we have lots of questions from the audience. Okay. Starting with some tweets first. All right. Um, so the first sort of question is, Super ha Power has such an empowering message. Do you feel optimistic about positive changes in the future? I think we have to be optimistic. I mean, there's a lot of scary, negative energy floating around the world right now, um, including the U.S., as we know. But... The, the blessing, the silver lining of that is that I do think it's waking people up and I think that it's, it's creating a sense of unity on the other side and it's, it's making us realize that we have work to do and that we have to be loud and we have to get involved. So I, I do have um, positive hopes for that. I think that, I hope that with everything that's going on right now when it comes time to vote, for example, that it, more people will get out and vote and make changes. Yes. Great question. All right, our next sort of question is, um, Adam, you always have a perfect match between lyrics, rhythm, and riffs in your songs. Well, thanks. So I wanted to know, <laughs> how do you match them this perfectly? And do you write the lyrics first, or the rhythm and the riff comes at first? This one was, like I was saying before, this one was kind of like we had like a groove that we created. Um, I kind of, I, I was definitely like, driving them to go to a certain vibe. Um, and actually, when I first created the demo for this, the chorus sounded a lot different. It, there was different lyrics, there was a different hook, and there wasn't that really yummy bass line. And so everything up to the chorus sounded really cool. And I lived with the song for a while, and I was like, it's just not, eh. So I went back to Tommy, and I was like, what, can we like make this really funky? Like, we put on some Daft Punk records, we put on some old Sly Stone, we put on some... What else we listen to? Um, I think Rufus, I think, with Shaka Khan, you know, yeah, Tommy's. Yeah. We just listen to like a lot of classics with like really yummy bass lines. And, and he just started messing around and I, I heard it in my head. And, I, and Tommy English, the guy that, that, that co-wrote and produced this, is the greatest. He's so open and collaborative, plays all the instruments. And I just started singing like, and 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 he was like, oh, okay, okay, walk it down. And he's like, is that corny? I'm like, nope. <laughs> I love that. So that's how it, that was like how it, how it went. That's yeah. great. A little play by play. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Who's first in the audience here? Right here. Right here. Hi, Adam. Hi. First Velvet. Time. She looks like the album cover. <laughs> I love it. It's the beginning of that. I know I'm going to be seeing a lot of green velvet yeah. for the next yes, two you years, will. you know? You will. I want to say, first of all, how much I love Superpower. It's Thank you. It's a fantastic you. song. So you said that you've been writing lyrics for about three and a half years for Velvet. And I was just wondering, has your dog, Pharaoh, ever inspired you to write anything? <laughs> <laughs> Not directly. Like, there's no, like, my dog. Oh, actually, wait, I take that back. <laughs> You will hear a song that I do talk about my dog. You're wrong. You're right. Yes, that's true. I just I just realized that. Yeah, because you know when I like around the time when I got Pharaoh that I had just started working on the music and he really just he like having a pet is just so like great you know it make your heart grows you know and and I love my dog. Um, I miss him so bad. He's been at his his grandpa's house for summer camp while I've been away on tour. So I'll get him back soon. Yeah. <laughs> Pharaoh, if you're watching, daddy's coming home. <laughs> Amazing. Dogs are the best. All right. Who's next back here? Hi, Adam. Hi. So I know you're talking about your musical theater experience, and I was wondering if you would ever considering going on Broadway in the near future. Well, I think it's like one of those things where if it were the right project at the right time, I would certainly be open to it. I, I love the theater. It's like that's what I grew up doing, it's part of me. And I have so many dear friends that are doing theater here in New York, and um, it's a community that I really, really admire. So I think if it was the right thing, yeah. Great. 
Yeah. But, you know, to be totally honest with you, I don't want to just, like, be the next guy that fills in for the fourth guy that played the role. <laughs> I want to create something. I want to create something fresh that no one's created yet. I think that would be really fun. Awesome. We have time for just one more question right here. Hi. That's it? <laughs> just one more? No, I could do this all day. Fun, right? <laughs> I want to talk to everybody. Uh, <laughs> Okay, Hi. you can speak. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lana, and I've been a fan of yours from the beginning. And I'm like, I I, it's good to see you. I gave yeah. Farrell a gift last time I saw you. Yeah, me. that's right. I remember that. Um, and I love your new music so much, and I'm looking forward to the EP. Thank you. I just wanted to find out if uh, you were you wanted to work with somebody and you didn't get a chance to on this EP and who would that person be or whether it Oi, you want me to like shade <laughs> shade shade I you know I I got to, the thing that I liked about this project was that it wasn't really wrapped up in like the politics and the biz, like the deep deep business I wasn't working with um, you know, a big major label with a big important uh, executive producer or a and person saying like, we want to put you with this so you can get this number one hit here. It wasn't worked on that way. It was so organic. Um, like I said, I reached out to people that I knew. I reached out to people that I liked because I think being in a room that's really comfortable where you understand each other and have some, uh, some history, it creates a better environment for creativity. Um, so no, I, I, I don't think I, I reached out to anybody that said no, cause I didn't, I reached out to the people that I knew would say yes. <laughs> Is there anybody you would have, uh, collaborated like a duet with? Well, I, 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 there's plenty of people I'd love to sing a duet with and who knows, maybe that'll happen on side B. Ooh. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Well, <laughs> thank you for that question. Before that, we have side A coming out September yes. 27th. Thank you so much for thank coming you. to Thank you. Give him one more round of applause. Adam Lambert. Thanks, guys.